Hello and welcome to this stunning post-glacial landscape that we call the Lake District National Park. Welcome to episode two of Glaciation in the Lake District. In this episode, we're going to look at the erosional features up at the origin of the glacier, right up in the mountains behind me. We're going to look at quarries, we're going to look at pyramidal peaks, and we're going to look at erats. And we're going to look at exactly how our glacier formed these stunning features. So we've moved further up our U-shaped valley, but we've stopped here to have a look at our erosional features from a distance. Behind me is the mountain of Cats de Camp. It's one of many mountains here in the Lake District. Now this mountain we're looking at in a bit more detail because this one is a pyramidal peak. You can see at the top, you've got a triangle shape like the top of a pyramid. Coming down from that triangle, you've got sharp ridges. They would be our arets. Now we're gonna head up to the top of that mountain later to have a look at them in a bit more detail. But our first erosional feature that we're gonna look at is around the river valley to my right. Now we've got a hanging valley on my right hand side. We'll have a look at that in more detail next episode. But what we're interested in now is what's in the hanging valley. And that's a quarry, an iron chair shaped hollow where our glacier would have started. Let's head up into the quarry now and have a look at it in a bit more detail. So here we have our first erosional feature. This is our quarry. Now thousands of years ago, before the Ice Age, this would have only been a small hole in the mountainside. Now, it's a huge indentation with steep sides and a vertical flat wall. Now how did it get like this? Well, the glacier made it like this. So in the small hollow, which is north facing on the mountainside, snow and ice would build up. The reason why it would have to be north facing is because on a north facing side of a mountain, doesn't get as much sunlight as the south facing. So this means that the ice wouldn't melt and would build up. When the ice builds up, it forms something called fern or neve. Over time, more and more fern and neve would build up and the pressure at the bottom of this ice would increase. When this pressure increases, something happens to it. It starts to melt. Let's have a look at an experiment now to show how this melting at the bottom of the glacier would have happened. So here we have our experiment, which is going to show what is happening at the base of the glacier, high up in the mountains, when it's beginning to form. So we have a plate here, which represents our hollow in the mountainside, and we have a large block of ice here, which is going to represent our glacier building up. So as more and more snow falls from the sky at the start of our glaciation, start of our ice age, you're going to have a build up of snow and ice within our hollow. So here's our snow and ice, it's building up in our hollow. Now more and more snow and ice is going to appear on top of this block of ice due to increased precipitation, due to temperatures dropping. This will increase the pressure on our block of ice. So I'm gonna represent the pressure by pushing down on this block of ice. Something happens to ice when you add pressure to it. When you add pressure, you need to have lower temperatures for water to freeze. So this ice will start to melt at the bottom where the pressure is the highest. So I'll continue to add a little bit more pressure. And as you can see, it's much easier now for my ice to start to move around. That's because at the base of my block of ice, the ice has melted and formed a layer of water. Now this layer of water will reduce the friction between the ice and the hollow and allow for the glacier to start to move. And when it can start to move, it can start to erode and move downhill. Now if I remove my glacier now, you can see in our hollow, we've got a pool of water. Now that pool of water has only been generated due to the ice melting at the bottom of the glacier 
due to the pressure from the top, from the build up of more snow and ice. So a glacier started to form and it started to melt at its base due to the huge pressure of the weight of the glacier. So now we've got a stream flowing at the base of our glacier. This reduces the friction there and will allow our glacier to start moving downhill under gravity. But how did this glacier move downhill under gravity? Did it move in a straight line or did it move in another way? Now, if it would have moved in a straight line, we would expect our mountainside behind us just to have a steep gradient slope in one direction. However, our quarry is not formed like that. We have steep, almost vertical valley sides. We have an almost vertical back wall and we have an open deep and base. So these were eroded by a different process and a different type of movement by the glacier. This movement is called rotational slip. Let's have a look at an experiment now which shows this rotational slip in action. So here we're going to look at the movement of the ice when the glacier starts to form. Now we've got a few props here that I'm going to explain what they are and what they represent. So the mixing bowl, this is our small hollow that's right at the top of our mountain where our ice will start to build up and is the very start of our glacier. The plate next to it is the start of our valley. So at the end of the hollow, we have the start of our valley. And then the ice here is the glacier itself. Now at the start of the ice age, we would have only had a small amount of ice in our ball. So the small amount of ice is building up, but it can't move anywhere at this moment in time. There is a lip on the hollow, and this is stopping as much as more ice is building up, it's stopping it from going anywhere. So any movement that's within the hollow, if I move this ice as we're adding more pressure, is in a rotational movement from the back of the glacier, on the back wall of the hollow, towards the lip. Now this movement would cause erosion at the base of the hollow, making it deeper. It would get to a point where where enough ice would build up within the hollow and it would get to a point where our glacier can then start to move downhill but it would need to build up a significant amount you can see there before it would start to move into the main valley and start eroding there so we have the rotational movement within the hollow itself, which would cause erosion at the base, which would make the hollow deeper. So our glacier started to move downhill under rotational slip. Now we know from the previous episode that as this glacier moves downhill, it picks up material from the valley floor and plucks it out of the valley floor itself by process of a plucking. Now the material that it plucks out is this jagged material here very angular. So when this scrapes against the valley sides and abrades the valley sides and floor, it's going to wear it away easily. So as our glacier is moving under rotational slip, it would start to over steepen our back wall. It would steepen the sides of our quarry and then deepen its base. Let's have a look at some diagrams which show this process in a bit more detail. Before maybe the position of our quarry. Now we know that our snow is accumulating in our north facing hollow. So on this diagram, the, the hollow on the far is right because the sunlight is not strong enough here to melt the ice. So it can build up over time. When it builds up over time, it gets deeper and deeper and heavier and more compact. And the ice at the bottom can start to melt and there's less friction here. So our ice sheet can start moving downhill our glacier starts moving however it moves within the hollow by rotational movement this rotational movement causes uh, plucking to occur and abrasion at the bottom of our glacier which is deepening our hollow making the back wall steeper and the sides of our quarry steeper and we also have freeze for our weathering happening above our glacier on the side of the pyramid a pyramidal peak 
and this is making the back wall even steeper still. So by these actions taking place, we're getting our distinct armchair shaped hollow, which is our corrid. Our glacier is continuing to grow as snowfall falls on it, and we're still in the ice age, so we have our long winters. And our glacier then grows so it's above the rock lip of the corrid, and then can start to move downhill. As it moves downhill, it will erode different features further down the valley. As we come to the end of our ice age, our glacier will melt and will leave our over deepened hollow of our corrid. And then the melt water from our glacier will accumulate in the over deepened base. So this will form a small lake called a tarn. And our tarns tend to stay there in corries. As where glaciers form, they form in areas of high rainfall. And therefore, this rainfall needs to accumulate somewhere. And it accumulates in the over deepened base of our corries, keeping our tarns. So here we have it, our finished corrie. Very impressive feature. We've got our very steep sides. We've got our almost vertical back wall and we've got our over deepened base. Now when the glacier melted at the end of the ice age, the glacier, the melt water would have had to go somewhere. And this melt water gathered in the corrie itself because it had become over deepened and it had a large rock lip at the front, which I'm sat on now. So the melt water gathered there and formed the tarn. This is red tarn behind us in the Lake District, with Helvellyn behind. So that's our first erosional feature, our quarry. We now need to look at the Pyramidal Peak, which is behind me, Helvellyn. So I need to go and climb that now. So I'll see you up there. So here we find ourselves at the top of our Pyramidal Peak. We can quite clearly see here we have got two corries on either side of it. One on the left hand side here, which is Red Tarn in front of Helvellyn, and we've got a smaller corrie on the right hand side too. So these corries have eroded backwards towards the spire of the Pyramidal Peak to make a pointed top. We also have arets that come away from the Pyramidal Peak. We've got a second arete here, which is going towards the main glacial valley, which has been truncated as the glaciers have eroded down the valley. The glacier that's come from Red Tarn has joined the main glacial valley as a hanging valley. We'll have a look at that next time. Let's now have a look at our final feature, which is our arrests. So this is our final feature. This is our arrest. Now it's a razor ridge that's leading all the way up to our pyramidal peak in the distance. Now to the right of this razor ridge is our quarry, which is formed below Helvelly. To the left of our ridge, we have a larger quarry, which would have formed at the head of the main valley. Now earlier in the episode, we were down in the main valley. So this is the start of that main valley. Now the glacier that would have formed the quarry at the base of Helvellyn would have been smaller than the main valley glacier. So it would form a hanging valley above the main valley glacier floor. We'll have a look at that next episode. So our arete, it's a sharp razor ridge because we have our two glaciers that are eroding either side of it. There would have been strong lateral erosion on the valley sides and this strong lateral erosion would have eroded upwards, making the valley sides steeper and making them form in a razor ridge. So that's it We off our erosional features. Let's head back down into the main valley to get a summary of this episode. So there we have it. We've come to the end of our episode two. We've looked at exactly how quarries form through that erosion of abrasion and plucking, over deepening that hollow, making an armchair shaped hollow, and eroding backwards, making a steep back wall. This starts to help form our pyramidal peaks when we have more than one glacier around a peak of a mountain forming at the same time. And then in between these two glaciers, we will have a sharp ridge forming. That would be our arete. This now leads us down into the valley floor because our glacier is going to start moving downhill under gravity and start eroding features down here. So please join me next time when we look at this U-shaped valley and how this one and the features on the valley sides itself, such as the hanging valleys. Thank you very much for watching this episode and I'll see you next time.